welcome to Uno Mas Copa on Espanol, or in English, what we like to call it, One More Glass, the weekly wine show that looks to demystify the world of wine. And this week, what are we looking at, Jack? We're looking at decanters and glassware. I didn't know you were bilingual. It's very impressive. Thank you very much. Right, today... Mucho gracias, should I say. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> right, today, arrayed in front of us, we've got a bit of a weird selection of different things. Yeah, we have, yeah. Um, so should we start with decanters? Okay, so decanting, I would say, is one of those things that a lot of people will see happening in a restaurant, or they'll see a dusty old decanter in a cabinet, and they'll think, you know, what is that really worth it? I mean, what's the point of it? it sounds a bit poncy, doesn't it? It does sound I'm just going to go and decamp my wines, so I just drink it. Yeah, get the cork out, pour <clears> it out, <throat> let's have a glass of it. But what is the science behind it? What is the reason that you decant the wine, and why is it so important? So there are two different reasons, two of the main different reasons. Yep. The first of all is with old wine, they throw sediment. So you might see it inside the bottle, there's, there's all sort of bits in the bottom stuck to the side. So you decant it to get rid of the sediment because no one likes to chew their way through the last glass of wine. And so often in like a restaurant you might see like a sommelier with a, with a candle. Yeah. Yeah, so the candle is held underneath the bottle of wine to see when the sediment passes through the neck and then stop pouring at that point. Yeah, okay. Um, we've got a lovely decanter just here, haven't we? This is a beautiful decanter, um, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit, little bit novelty. <laughs> I'm not going to say what I think it looks like. but. Um. So the, the other main benefit is aeration, which we spoke about a little bit in our gadgets episode. But uh, if, you, if you're going to drink a younger wine especially, uh, it's very good to pour it in a decanter because it helps it open up you know, releases a lot of those different flavours. Uh, and I think generally they look pretty good, don't they? But also, just on the decanting subject, I mean, it, it's not an exact science. I mean, some, some people say some great varieties you should never decant. I mean, there's this big thing about Burgundy and Pinot Noir in particular from, from Burgundy rather than maybe the New World. But, you know, a lot of Burgundian vignerons will say, whatever you do, don't decant, you know, these wines. You know, they should be popped and poured. Then you've also got that, um, you know, understanding of, say, older wines, as you mentioned about the sediment. Sure, use your decanter to, to decrease the amount of sediment you're going to have in your glass. But also, older wines maybe need less exposure to oxygen because obviously they're not going to last as long and that can, can ruin them, can't it? You know, yeah. If you decant them for too long, you lose all the flavour, all that sort of lovely perfume disappears and you're left with some vinegar. In a so decanter. for a viewer at home, is there a simple way you can help them to best know when to decant and not? And when you are decanting, how long you should be doing it for? Is it just an exact science you have to learn for yourself? So here's the simple answer to the viewer at home. No, <laughs> <laughs> I can't. It is an inexact science. I think if you have any young wine, you know, if it's, if it's fewer than five years old and it's a decent bottle of wine, then throw it in a decanter. Yeah. I think that's, that's about the only thing we can say, but it really depends on the vintage, the style, what the winemaker's aiming for. Um, I think, okay, <clears throat> this is what I would say. Look, there's always going to be certain winemakers or regions like Burgundy that will say, look, you can't decant wine. I think you're never necessarily going to do much damage with a decanter unless it's a really old wine. Mm. Um, so I think most wines you can decant for a certain amount of time. I think it's always going to help in terms of bringing the wine out and, and really sort of developing those aromas and flavours and making it a more enjoyable experience. Yeah, if you think it's been incarcerated in that bottle for however long, wines, again, to sound a bit poncy, are like living things. They need to be let free for a while and, and sort of adapt to their new surroundings. So decanters quite are quite good at allowing them to do that. It's like a, it's like a little pen, like a little release pen for your absolutely, wine. Absolutely, absolutely. So look, if you're an aspiring wine drinker, you want to learn more about wine, you want to appreciate wine more often, we would always recommend buying a decanter at home, trying out a different great variety, do a bit of research online as well. Um, but I would say in general, it's never necessarily a bad thing to decant a wine if you've got the time. No. So let's now move on to one of my pet subjects, especially pet hates when it comes to restaurants, but glassware and, and what we think about glassware. So. Do you want to introduce what we're doing today and how we're going to test this out? I think glassware that's familiar to everyone. We've got an espresso mug, a water mug, your favourite mug. My West Ham uh, tea mug. And then a really good wine glass. Uh, and I, I think, you know, the wine glasses, again, I think the stemware is so easy to take the piss out of. You can buy varietal specific wine glasses, yeah. which sounds absolutely ridiculous on the end of it. And I think it can be taken to absurdity. But generally, if, if you get a really good glass, this one in particular is by Zalto, yep. um, it does make so much difference to the overall flavour. That's hand-blown uh, 
in Austria, isn't yep, it? Yep, in Austria. And it's extremely thin so glass. So delicate. Very yeah. delicate. So, so delicate. And it just allows you to, to aerate the wine more, get more aroma, which is the key thing. And it just makes it more pleasurable to taste. I think, you know, beer drinkers, of which I definitely am one, mm. if I get a really nice thin rimmed beer glass in yep. my lager, it's, yep. it's very pleasant. And then a nice handle with your ale, it, it does make a big difference. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, look at these different types of um, glasses. Well, I mean, obviously one's a mug, but if you look at the different um, you know, items we've got here to use today. I mean, this is made for espresso, so it's made for hotter temperatures. You can see the glass is thicker. Yeah. Obviously, it's shorter. It's not necessarily trying to bring out the aromas necessarily compared to the wine glass. And then you've got the, the, the tumbler. So what we should be seeing really is as we move through these, um, this should be the most expressive aromatically. You know, it should really bring out the aromas, the flavors, um, whereas maybe some of these would be a lot muted and actually the flavor, you know, when you're drinking or tasting wine, smell has such an important part to play. Yeah, and really that's what glassware is doing in terms of helping you appreciate and taste the wine. Yeah, and that is a, a delicate instrument designed exactly to bring pretty pleasure. <laughs> so before we actually Much go like this. The, so before we go into the actual um, tasting the experiment, are we also saying to viewers, look, if you are interested in wine, if you want to learn more about wine, you want to appreciate them at their best, it's worth the investment going out and buying some decent glassware to taste those wines. 100%. Nothing will make more of a difference to your wine drinking than buying decent glasses. And I 100% agree. And in fact, some winemakers even go to say that glassware can be the difference between, you know, two or three points from a critic. Uh, and actually, I went to Burgundy in June tasting with one famous Burgundy um, producer, and he was saying how he thought all wine critics should taste all wines with the same glassware yeah. to make it consistent. Because obviously, you go to different producers, they've got different glassware, and actually, the environment, the subjectivity changes, or the objectivity, pardon me, changes because you're using different glassware. So you're not actually tasting the wines in exactly the same set of circumstances and scenarios. Completely. So there we go. We like glassware. Right, let's do the test. <laughs> it's so important. What are, we, what, are we, what are we doing here? Okay, you're gonna blindfold yourself and we've got four different wines here. I'm gonna put one of them into the decanter, just to have a bit of fun with it, but I'm gonna pour a different one into each of your uh, of your glasses. Okay. My, this is my little wine night, by the way, just call some attention to that. He guards, he guards the good wine. Um, so booze a lot. Right, so in is, each- Is he of, House Lannister? <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, How stark? Definitely a stark. Oh, yeah. So, in each of these different receptacles, I'm going to give you a different wine, and then you're going to tell me the different aromas you get. Okay? Okay, absolutely. I will waft you might struggle with that decanter in some of these small glasses. But I'll waft it in front of your nose, that'll be absolutely fine. So, I've got to try and guess which the wine is. This is what all my training has paid off for. So, Can't yeah. Can't wait to look at full. Four different wines and I just want to get as many aromas as possible from you. And you might even get a taste at the end of it. Oh, if I'm lucky. If, if you're lucky, if you get all four of them right. So, I'm nearly done. I've got to try and guess the glassware. You've got to try and guess, you've got to try and guess the glassware and guess the aromas. So, let's start with this. Tell me what you can smell. <laughs> so, have I gone My too finger. Um, it smells like you haven't washed your hands for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can smell a bit of, um, bit of like black currant. Um, almost like a, I'd say it's a little bit jammy. Um, it's not massive. It's not. A, it's not a lot there. I can't necessarily smell a lot there. Okay, let's move on. I would say if I was guessing a grape variety, maybe sort of um, cabernet. Cabernet sort of smells good. All right, have a sniff of this one. I'd say it's a little bit more open than the last one, so I'd say it's a bigger, it's got to be a bigger glass. <sighs> Not a lot, maybe a little bit, I'll tell you what, on this one, a little bit more it's sort a good of party game. A, a little bit more eucalyptus or menthol on this one. The one before, all I could smell was like sort of a jammy, black currently smell. Not very muted. That one there, I'd say, had a little bit more maybe vegetal, menthol y type flavours. Wow, that's, that's really opened up, like. Sniffing it like a Velociraptor. I mean, that's completely different. I mean, the amount of, um, the, like the whole sort of kaleidoscope of smells has increased significantly. Um, and actually, I'd say the, the first one was almost more jammy. And that last one was a little bit more complex. So there was more, there was more flavors going on. It was a bit broader and wider um, and actually, 
I think that was, in terms of pure wine, I, I enjoyed that one the, the, the most out of, the, out of all of them as well. Okay, last one. I can't smell anything. <laughs> I apart from my fingers again. I don't know, is it, any, is it there? I don't even know if it's there. Is <laughs> it's there anything there? It's genuinely there, Are you, yeah. you taking a piss? Is it there? <laughs> no, I, can't, I literally can't say anything. No, okay. Nothing, nothing on that last one. Right, in those glasses, there was a Pinot Noir, a Cabernet. Was it? A Syrah and the Cabernet Franc. Which do you think was which? <laughs> no, they're all the same. They're all the same. Okay, it was fine. all the same wine. It was you all can't just trick me that well. No, it was all a Bordeaux. Okay, so if I go one, two, three, four, I'd say number three was this one. Correct. And I'd say that was number one. You're wrong, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. That was number one. That was number one. That was number one. That was number four? No. No, which way around was it? So you're actually really accurate when you're smelling that. So that was number one, okay. which you got a bit from, but not yeah, a great deal. A that was number two, which you said was open, yeah. but quite sort of eucalyptus y mentally, so you're getting yeah. more secondary characters. Yeah. That was, that was number that was three, where you, you know, yeah, you were pretty um, pretty complimentary. And that was number four. And actually doing it, you know. I couldn't smell anything. I, I there's, thought, there's absolutely did nothing. I smell nothing at one point? Yeah, no, no, genuinely, this was in front of your nose. So that was that, that honestly, no, smell it now. There's no, I can't, you can't you, you smell get absolutely anything. Bugger that's off unbelievable. That. Yeah. Honestly, nothing. Yeah, it's pointless. That's absolutely, if, if you have the opportunity to try this at home, I'm, it's, it's exceptional how well that illustrates the point about how much of a difference the glassware can make because there's just nothing there. No, and I think there's a horrible, horrible English tradition of putting port and sherry and sweet wine in tiny little glasses. Yeah. Um, and you just can't smell it, it completely ruins the wine, which yeah. may explain why port, sherry and sweet wine are unpopular. Because um, they're being served up in, in pointless, noncy little glasses around the dinner table. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, I was completely blindfolded, so I, and obviously I, I got the order wrong, so I didn't even know which, which one was which, but for me, it was overwhelmingly clear. I mean, that was just a different, that was a different experience. You yeah. could just immediately feel the full breadth of the wine, the nuance, the different different um, flavours that were there. That was amazing. I really enjoyed that, Jack. Thanks very much for taking me through that. Um, My pleasure. It, it generally was an experiment that worked. So golden rules, buy, Gold, gold. buy good glasses. 100% it makes such a massive difference to your wine. If you want to drink good wine, you want to enjoy your wine, you want to take, even if you want to start spending up the ladder, you want to start pushing the boat out, even at 25, 30 pounds a bottle. You need good glass. You need good glass, but you're going yeah. to ruin it with a bad glass. So that is that is a massive thing to take away from this. And we hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of One More Glass. Um, we've got loads more content on the way. We've got loads more content that's being filmed. So make sure you follow and subscribe us to keep up to date with everything we're doing. And of course, if you want to get in touch or leave any feedback, or if you did this experiment at home and you found the same, or even if you didn't find the same with the experiment at home, leave the comments below and we know. will get back to you. 